Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start the final keynote speech. My name is Michiko Izuka. I am uh, from GRIPS. And I would like to um, introduce the Honorable Dr. Eugene Muchimura, who is a Minister of Education, Republic of Rwanda. Honorable Dr. Muchimura previously worked at Inter-University Council of East Africa, where he coordinated the Eastern and Southern African Center of Excellence Project funded by World Bank in eight countries to support research and education in 16 universities. As a Minister of Education, he strongly believes in importance of technology and nurturing talents for young scientists. He also takes a national responsibility for policy and strategy related to science, technology, and innovation. Furthermore, he has a role as a co-chair of National Council for Science and Technology, where he directly supports research that are important for responding to the issue relating to the country, his country. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Uh. Thank you very much for uh, uh, very nice introductions, which I never expected in the first place. I thank uh, the organizers of INGISA, uh, Sir Peter Glackman, uh, for inviting us, Dr. Remy Quinlion and others for inviting us to share with you on our perspective about the role of science and technology in light of developing policy. You may have perhaps learned that Rwanda is a country of a thousand hills. It is very mountainous. But uh, probably more important is to give you what Rwanda is at a glance. Rwanda has uh, a population of about 12 million. The official languages are English and French in addition to local dialect in Rwanda. Literacy employment rate is 68-16% uh, respectively. And Rwanda has a cabinet of 50% male, 50% female, and 62% parliament female. Uh, GDP has grown over time to 774, uh, more than threefold over the last few years. But perhaps more important down is that uh, in the recent, I think, October doing business report by World Bank, Rwanda ranked as uh, 29th out of 190 countries, it ranked second to uh, Mauritius. And this is a significant change because there have been a lot of uh, key indicators and the structural reforms all based on policy and implementation. And so it is much easier now to do business in Rwanda, register your company, acquire land if you have money. And so those are some of the structural reforms related to policy and implementation. If we come to the role of science and technology in forming policy and practice, we strongly believe in the power of science in order to transform the economy of our country and ensure that our people gradually improve their well-being. And that's quite enshrined in various uh, national agendas, uh, 2020, mainly 2035 and 2050, to become a middle-income and high-income country, as well as various strategies for transformation, uh, all aligned with African Agenda 2063. And so the overall goal is that uh, our country becomes an economy-based or knowledge-based economy, changing from agriculture-based economy over time. And so we believe that the role of uh, technology, science, innovation is very critical to change the lives of our people. We will talk about uh, various elements, how education and science, from basic education to tertiary level of education, uh, will gradually transform Rwanda, and what we are doing in Rwanda to effect this from time to time. In uh, 2005, the cabinet approved a national policy on science, technology, and innovation. But this is being reviewed in order to uh, be in alignment with the various national agenda because it is quite important to ensure that it is quite aligned with the current changes and the visions, uh, particularly 
the national strategy for transformation to improve the employment and increase the numbers of uh, employment opportunities through vocational training programs, building industry, but also supporting achievement of SEDGs. Uh, perhaps more important is to know that the objective of uh, this policy, the national policy on science and technology, is to build the research capability and the capacity needed so that uh, overall we achieve a national citizen-centric transformation. And there are quite important areas in terms of uh, developing our science and capacity, but most of them are centered around four themes. Knowledge, acquisition, and deepening, doing research that provides evidence, but also novel research, so that it informs policy, but also be able to transfer knowledge across uh, scientific individuals, transfer knowledge across partners, transfer knowledge and share knowledge among colleagues, civil society organizations, academia, and several other key players. But we don't forget the role of innovation and entrepreneurship because it is all centered around doing business. How does it transform the lives of our people? And that's why a doing business report by World Bank is quite pertinent to what we are doing. And so it is important to indicate that the Ministry of Education, which I am honored to lead, is the overall overseer of the strategy for capacity building in science, technology, and innovation. And uh, down the road, there is an implementation organ, the National Council for Science and Technology, which is an advisory body to the government in terms of uh, uh, the mandate, but also contr uh, control, coordinating and monitoring what is happening on the ground and management of uh, research funds and implementation. We were very honored that the government of Rwanda this year in June approved the 30 million dollar grant or National Research and Innovation Fund. So out of the limited resources and competing interests the country has, uh, it, it decided to launch that fund because policy alone is not important. Actions are more important. And so we'll see on the right, this is the right honorable prime minister who was with me in the middle launching the fund. This is Neil Turok in Canada who is a co-chair of National Council for Science and Technology. And so we believe that if we focus on various researches, particularly implementation research, it can help to provide evidence to inform policy. So we are open to doing research with partners across the globe, but one of the most important criteria is that you do research with the Rwandans, so in partnership. And so, uh, any of the members in the House are welcome to work with us on this. The main themes are agriculture, infrastructure, mining, health, and other important related disciplines that we think can transform our economy. And so, there are the other ministries, such as health, environment, infrastructure, have specific own priorities in their agendas as well as public and private research and academic institutions to implement research. Perhaps it's important to note that within the region, the East African Science and Technology Commission, the STECO, that started uh, about 10 years or so, uh, which is headquartered in Rwanda, oversees agenda and cooperation in science, technology, and innovation in the East African region. And so, that's where we are in uh, development and implementation of science agenda. But uh, most important is that we have made a priority in ensuring that we cultivate the spirit of science and technology through prioritization of STEM. All uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, training at all levels. And so for basic education, for tertiary education, that has been our priority. For instance, if you talk about basic education, we have had a lot of uh, critical uh, decision in ensuring what we call competence-based curriculum. That is in primary and the secondary education, so that student-centered learning becomes a priority other than teacher-centered, which we hope is going to continuously enhance the learning of our 
student, our students and pupils by doing research. We have also a prioritized use of ICT in education and we have a master plan. And so we have rolled out a 4G optic network fiber capability within the country uh, since 2013, which has reached over 4,800 kilometers countrywide. And so internet is uh, fast. And because of that, we have what we call one laptop per child in primary schools and smart classroom design in secondary schools. So that at least there are 100 uh, laptops within a secondary school which can be used for learning and uh, teaching. And uh, there is internet connectivity in most of those places where we have rolled out uh, smart classrooms. Currently, we are uh, about 700 and three secondary schools out of 1,567. For primary, we are about 970 out of 2,800. So we are not very far, but have made a decision to do that. Besides that, we are implementing mathematics science for South Saharan Africa program to use technology and support it in schools through University of Rwanda, through AIMS, and through other uh, projects within the region, particularly the World Bank uh, Center of Excellence on the Teaching and Learning of Mathematics, which is under the University of Rwanda. The other priority we have is vocational training programs that is very pertinent, and which is an engine to support employment, employment of the youth through creation of small and medium enterprises. So outside here, I was meeting some of the youth who are already here in Japan, eight of them. I had a short meeting with them, 45 minutes, and they are here to, to study. And so this is helping us to create job opportunities to change the lives of our people. This is one of the pictures to, sh sorry. This is one of the pictures to show uh, on top panels. This is one laptop per child. And lower panels, this is uh, 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 smart classrooms, secondary school smart classrooms. We have a contract with Positivo, Positivo, a South American company that we are assembling laptops within the country. We have a contract with them so that they provide uh, laptops within the secondary schools, but also in, in universities on a loan, but also supported by the government. At the tertiary level, we have made a decision to establish and support what we call centers of excellence in specific fields. And so we have attracted and supported Carnegie Mellon University Center of Excellence for Africa, which is, uh, I think, in their fourth year. We have supported AIMS, or African Institute of Mathematical Science, which is headquartered in Rwanda, the East African Institute for Fundamental Research, Trieste in Italy, which we launched uh, this month, uh, last month, and several other centers of excellence are supported by World Bank, Internet of Things, Sustainable Energy, and others in order to support tertiary education, support research, provide capacity training for youngsters because we believe they are going to be the drivers of our, our future economy. So these are some of the pictures when we were launching the East African Institute of Fundamental Physics. By the way, for most of these centers of excellence, eh, Rwanda supports 50% of students in East Africa. For instance, students from East Africa who are going to come to study at Institute of Theoretical Physics are going to be supported 50%. And that's true for AIMS, for East Africans, and for Rwandans that's uh, fully supported. And so we have invested in uh, science in terms of uh, research, but also in terms of training. Coming to the region, uh, there is what we call Partnership Applied Science for Engineering and Technology, PASET, which is an initiative that was started by three countries and later on now five countries. Each country, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Senegal, Kenya, and the Ivory Coast, have uh, committed to two two million US dollars each as a seed fund to support PhD training for all Sub-Saharan uh, students. Because of that, we have partnered with the World Bank, which has agreed to put in 15 million, and South Korea, which has agreed to put in 10 million. Uh, two months back, there was a delegation that came to Japan to look for a possible uh, partnership. Most of these 
funds may not be in direct cash, but providing scholarship for PhD students is already counted as part of uh, research and capability training. It is an ambitious, an ambitious uh, plan to train, I think, over 10,000 uh, PhD students from South Saharan Africa in engineering and related disciplines over the next 10 to 15 years. Besides that, we have what we call Chigari Innovation City, which is uh, uh, housing so many of the universities that I am talking about and the centers of excellence, uh, mainly around several platforms on technology, uh, development, human capital, but also friendly financing or entrepreneurship. And so we have forged partnership with various academia in order to implement this. We are still open with uh, various partners in, in, in order to ensure that Chigari Innovation City becomes a reality. So this is a new reconstructed building by for Cambridge Mirror University. I think the government of Rwanda com uh, uh, contributed 50%, 11.5 million US dollar building. It was uh, launched three months back. Uh, this is a graduation. Before they were in another building, this is a meeting we had in Senegal on the Passet a few months back, I think in April. And so Chiga Innovation City is real estate that has several uh, areas, as I talked about, various centers of excellence, some completed, others not completed. As you can see, it is an important pillar to drive our research and the uh, uh, capability training agenda. However, most important thing that we find important are the fact that we, we have what we call homegrown solutions that inform policy and practice. And so when you come to Rwanda or read about Rwanda, you will learn about some of these. For instance, there is what we call Muganda or community work uh, that has been there since 2007. When you look at amount generated through this kind of community work, it happens every Saturday of the last month, every last Saturday of the month, it approximately has generated uh, 38 million US dollars. We have Obudehe, which is a long standing Rwandan practice to support people in the community. We have several others like Itorero or traditional school for civil, uh, civic values and education. And what we have, what we call, for instance, Jiringa, one cow per, one cow per family which has generated almost more than uh, 180 cows distributed. When you get a cow and get a calf, you give it to a neighbor free of charge. So that's the kind of communal approach. Most of the members in the house may be quite familiar with what we call traditional gachacha courts that have been very helpful to unite people. They were introduced after 1994, genocide against the Tutsi, and they have become a source of unity and reconciliation among Rwandans. Uh, perhaps you also know of what we call Mutual Health Center or Community Based Health Insurance. Coverage is over 90% on average. And there are several others, particularly uh, performance based contracts. So every year I have to sign a contract with the president. Similarly, the mayors have to sign a contract with the governors and the governor outside the contract, the Minister of Local Government and others. And I think you may be aware of what we call Agachiro Development Fund, which is a national sovereign wealth fund to help the country in the case of national economic shocks. And that, is, uh, that was established some time back. And for one year, our own rate mobilized about 23 million US dollars. So these are the most important things that we think are important to inform policy. But we have challenges. We have not been able to promote enough research output. We have not had enough scholarships to our youngsters. And so I was very delighted to talk with Dr. Remy Quinion that uh, Quebec uh, government is going to sponsor students in the artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and the internet of things. I was very delighted to hear that. This is one of the gaps. But we are trying to leverage it through pattern institutions as I'm talking right now. Some challenges, however, being addressed. We think that leveraging on mentorship from partner and uh, strengthening our industry academic partnership 
is quite important and perhaps encouraging high-level scientific projects across in Africa are some of the most important pillars. Uh, you may know when we talk about a uh, commitment of the government, that the government sometime back in 2007, 2007 committed 1% of GDP to fund research and development at African Union. Uh, that has uh, not been the case for some countries, but at least something is happening. I already talked about PASET partnership for the region, which is supporting PhD training. Perhaps as I conclude, it is important to indicate that uh, uh, the commitment of African leaders in March, when Africa Continental Free Trade Area was uh, signed, it was very important because we believe this is going to contribute to about 1.3 million, 1.2 billion consumer uh, in terms of uh, trade, inter African trade, which will double over time. But we certainly provide opportunities for research and development, and uh, opportunities to attract more investment in Africa. But it goes along with the treaty on free movement of people. And so you know that most countries now are accepting uh, visa entry free or less in terms of reducing visa restrictions. And so as I conclude, it is important to note that we have uh, agreed to lead in terms of proof of concept. You may have known about the zipline contract we have, drone technology assembled in Rwanda to transfer blood to various parts of the country. And so this has had a very good impact on reducing maternal mortality rate. And we are signing another contract with Zipline also to deliver medicines and other uh, technologies. We have a contract with Volkswagen. We have a contract with Andela. And so these are some of the important pillars we think are quite essential for the country in order to drive our economy going forward. Last month, we had an MOU with Alibaba, electronic trade, wild trade platform to use internet connectivity to do trade between Rwanda uh, and Africa and China. And so Rwanda and Kofi can easily be uh, bought in, in, in China much easier, and that helps also tourism. As I finalize my remarks, I think it is very important to indicate that uh, the power of leadership is very important. If you know what the Prime Minister, uh, Right Honorable Abbey, has done within these few months, you can know that the power of leadership is very important. A lot of diplomatic ties with Eritrea that had gone down over several years, a lot of changes in his government, 50% cabinet, and several other aspects. So we think that leadership is quite important in uh, driving policy, but mainly making sure that policy becomes a practice and so people, people's well-being are affected. And that's very critical. We thank the members and organizers of INGISA for uh, inviting us, but clearly we are uh, very committed to using science and technology to inform policy and change the well-being of our people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister uh, Michimura. Uh, we have very few minutes, but I think uh, it will be an opportunity to ask questions. So I think we will have a few questions uh, and answer session. If there is any question or comment, please. I think we will collect uh, several. So if you have any other, uh, please raise your hand. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. I'm from Uganda. My name is Connie Shemireru. I'm also the co-chair of the Global Young Academy. Mine is only a comment, and maybe just to add to what you're saying, I must agree that leadership is so, so important. And Rwanda is leading in the, in the region, and now Ethiopia. And uh, as East Africans, we feel like maybe this kind of peer pressure might uh, begin to spread something. And I'm especially excited to see that uh, you plan on having an African Leadership Institute in Rwanda, which for me, I, I really think leadership is, is key. And I would like to express my ex appreciation for you. Also spending two full days at INSA as a minister, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if it's precedented. I think it's unprecedented. So I must <laughs> congratulate you.
Any other? Oh, yes. I also really only want to make a comment. Uh, a few months ago, Remy Kiran and I spent three days in Kigali uh, running a workshop uh, on science advice for East Africa. It, without any doubt, the most successful workshop Ingsa has ever run. Ministers sat right through, including Minister Metamura, uh, sat through that workshop too. And the engagement of senior ministers and senior public servants from East Africa in the conversation with scientists, senior and young, led to the, probably the most vibrant conversation I've ever heard anywhere on how to develop uh, institutions and science, uh, uh, institutions for science advice in developing countries. So again, I want to acknowledge uh, Rwanda's remarkable commitment and the leadership it's shown, which I think Remy and I are keen to continue to exploit. Um, any other comments or questions? Yes. There's a gentleman over there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Sano. I'm a professor in, from Canada. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very impressive. I, uh, I have a question about interdisciplinarity. Uh, this was a topic at this conference that came up right at the beginning and continued. And so I'm curious if in the context of Rwanda, you um, have discussions to go beyond STEM, what we sometimes call STEAM, to add arts right into the education system. Is that a topic that has surfaced in your context? Okay, so maybe please answer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kone, for your comments. I should also uh, very much say that in Rwanda, ministers are not political figures. They are more or less technical figures. So 50% technical work, 50% political work. And so we find it very important. That's why you will see that most of them are young. I probably am one of, I'm one of the oldest ministers in Rwanda. And everybody has to be chosen depending on science. So my background has been very scientific all along. And thank you for uh, uh, the comments. By the way, we have African Leadership University in Rwanda. Uh, that answers again what Alexis is talking about in terms of multidisciplinary approach in terms of STEAM. We welcome it. We have African Leadership University led by a gentleman called Fred, originally from Ghana. Now he's all over in South Africa, New Zealand. And so we will come interdisciplinary uh, approach in terms of uh, building capacity. You cannot only have science driving everything without good leadership. So African Leadership University is one of the major uh, centers of excellence that we support and we are very proud of. So multidisciplinary uh, research and capability is well built and we quite much welcome it, except that over time, we had to prioritize, prioritize STEM because most of our people are not uh, studying a lot of science. Uh, I thank Peter again, sir. Peter, thank you very much. And we look forward to working with you on a proof of concept project. We talked about this morning with Iran, Jamaica, on how to prioritize SDGs targets uh, by policymakers, academia, uh, so that that uh, provides data and evidence ahead of Commonwealth Science and Meeting in 2010. We will be delighted to work with you on that. And so it's no surprise that uh, we should work hard. Where others are working, we should leapfrog because of the uh, legacy and issues that we had in Rwanda. We are committed towards working that, towards working on that. And so it's not a, a surprise that we supported the August Ingisa meeting and we are here again to support science and technology, including our commitment and implementation. But of course I had other meetings with students and other stakeholders and ambassadors and everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your um, inspiring presentation, Minister. Thank you. And uh, another uh, a round of applause for him, please.
If I could just make one more comment in response to Mark's question. When we were going to go to Rwanda to uh, do the last workshop, we asked the Rwandan government through Eugene's the minister's office, what project, what cases, what situations would they like us to examine? And the three cases they want to examine all had a strong social science, as uh, biological, natural science, and humanities component to it. The most dramatic was that they wanted the major case to discuss would be to was to discuss psychological trauma after after conflict, and it was really quite an extraordinary conversation in exploring a hypothetical case of, of trauma. So I think that the way the workshops worked and the way the questions that Rwandans identified really showed the commitment to transdisciplinary approach. So thank you.